Yes, let's start. And uh, you're live. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Uh, where are we? Where you're from? Today is the 15th of November, 2023. This is the bi-weekly DAO call for the Effect Network. Um, I don't see any agenda items. Um, and there are also, there aren't any proposals. Um, there's one pros, proposal processing, payment for EFX, pancake swap, liquidity pool farm number six. Um, so I do want to open it up um, for anyone that wants to add an agenda item so that we can talk about it today before we continue on to discussing the proposal. Jesse, were you able to um, recycle those box rewards? I haven't been able to. No, I'm I'm a bit struggling there. I don't know how to do this with a multi-sig um, account that has these like the claim action in in box. I I haven't managed to like reverse engineer it because when you do that transaction with a, with your own account, it it's a quite complicated one, and and somehow if I like try to replicate it with different account names and sign it with a multisig, it just doesn't work. Um, so I'm gonna need some support because it's not open source either. So I cannot figure out what's the structure of that transaction um, that they're expecting. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm actually I have to reach out to their team because the the yeah we need to somehow do the multisig transaction. There's no other way. Mm-hmm. It's a good one though, because I, I tried it for a few hours and I forgot about it. But I'm gonna reach out to to Raven and and see if they can help us. Thanks, Jesse. For, for context, show. this was about. Um, uh, sorry, I was just going to give a quick context on the question because we were discussing the rewards we received from the DeFi box um, farm, I guess it's called. I'm not sure how to name it, but like this incentive pool where uh, LP providers got box tokens. But of course, our own token is the biggest. Um, like the, the Effect Network Foundation's account has a lot of these LP tokens, which they promised to donate back. Um, but that account is, a, is like a multi sig contract. And we haven't been able to sort of use the UI of DeFi Box with a multi sig. So there's something we need to figure out with the DeFi Box team in order to send those box tokens back. Well, also, you can reclaim the EFX as well. That would solve that as well. Right. Yeah. And the, the, the EFX rewards, especially. Yeah. Because they don't have anything special, so the the liquidity pool just gives reward to the foundation pool. So we need to claim it. Um, thanks for giving some context to that. Rochelle mentioned that Mark has a good idea in the general chat, but I don't see it back. Um, yeah, it would be nice if anyone can refer me to um, which idea th that might be. Um, Alan also asked, why are we still having problems opening and closing the cycle on time? Yeah, good question, Alan. Like, we've made some improvements with cycle opening and closing to make it way more easy to do, but it still requires a technical person to execute the transactions. And right now I'm actually the only person that, that does that. Like, I don't think anyone really knows the process either. Um, yeah, it's basically a question of time management. It's just, it's just, we've, we've, yeah. Um, we're so many cycles in, it's just something that 
even the slightest manual steps sort of once once every every while um it slips my mind and and then the cycle starts late um which is unfortunate especially if there's like no yeah if there's if there hasn't been any attention to it then sometimes i forget to like in initiate this cycle of, of the transactions needed um so with this like slight automation we had i thought it would be better but there is still um yeah it's, it slips time to time so um i noticed yeah i know that this cycle we started like i think on monday which is like three days later or something which is pretty bad so um it needs to be solved so yeah i i will have to figure out either can more people can like i can write a guide for more people to do these steps or or i like need to make sure it's fully automated uh in a way that 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 like no one needs to do anything more um but yeah both both options are possible and that's a good good comment by ellen ellen also mentioned and i also think um it's not a a good idea that the starting and the closing of the cycle relies on one person. Um, it would be better if we had a proper process or protocol, um, just in case um, anything ever happens to you. I mean, in that sense, that at least potentially other DAO members would be able to um, start or end the cycle or that the foundation might be able to do it. Um, There's other people that can do yeah. it. So that's not that's not like a risk. It's just that no one does, I guess. So no one feels that responsibility. Um, so either we need to broaden that, that group of people that can do it. I think that that makes sense, uh, definitely. Or program a robot that's able to do it. Um, I think those are two options that are pretty good. But it doesn't. It's not. I'm. It's not that I'm the only one who can do it. But it's. It's just that. Yeah. It. People just forget about it and don't look at it. And because I do it every time, everyone expects me to do it. So that's the. That's I think what's happening. So I need um, to. to that indeed. I think publishing a guide and getting more people involved will help in that respect. Well, I think you just need to create something that can pre-generate the the next cycle transaction like the, the the so then all someone has to do is just initiate it is that what it is sorry um alex uh, could you repeat your question well, Jesse, the basically to initiate the next cycle, you have to do some sort of transaction, right? Uh, just in case, Jesse, we can't hear you. Um, to quickly fill in, I, I think indeed, I think it's just a matter of um, approving and executing a transaction. Well, um, the thing is, Jesse, I'm pretty sure automation, Jesse but... has mentioned in the past as well that you need to um, set up the transaction. It's uh, it's just that if the automation is from a server side script, then it's not really the. I don't think it's the ideal way because um, then we're just relying on the script on the server, right? Indeed, it, it does automate the process, but and we've done it for other things in the past as well. But um, that also requires maintenance, and it's not, it's more of a temporary solution than a permanent one. All I'm just saying is if, if, a, if you can write a script to automate it, then just 
you could just set it up so it generates everything and then just like the script generates the transaction and it's just someone has to run it on its behalf so and can run it themselves to generate the script so that way like as Bree said may, any of the high guard can just run the, like whatever needs to be generated is generated and they can just run it themselves yeah good point yeah i also like the idea of the high guard then trying to that the high guard is then responsible instead of, instead of only jesse I can see that you're trying to say something, Jesse, but um, we're still not hearing you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. All right. Sorry about it. I think my Wi-Fi just dropped away, and, and I don't know if you guys could hear what I said before, but I, I just got the last bit, what you were talking about. Uh, about the script to automate it. Um, no, I think we missed a, a part of what you were saying. Uh, so just to repeat, um, basically, we need it needs a transaction needs to be generated and then initiated by someone with an EOS account, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what I was suggesting is, like, from what I understood when you said automation, it would be like just some server running a script, but I don't think that's the that's the ideal way because then we become dependent on the server. Um, so, well, otherwise, maybe you could automate it just if you have that script, you know, open source. That way, if, you know, something breaks, someone else can do the job. It is open source, though. It's like in the, it's already in the repo, um, in our main repo, the script to, to run. Um, so it's, it's, it's all quiet. Like anyone could actually do it. So I was, there's there's some solutions, right? We could also just because anyone can basically do it, we could like show a button in the in the DAO dashboard, like at the moment that the cycle is overdue, and anyone could basically click the button and do the transaction. That was one way I was sort sort of thinking about, like then sort of the okay, person well then, that's firstly interacting. How about you show David then, and then David can show me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cause That's possible. Because the because the cycle's ending soon, right? On Friday, yeah. Yeah, so just show David how to do it, and then the next cycle, David can show me, and then between the three of us, we can you know be on schedule. Yeah, for sure. That sounds good. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah, I will. I will like. Let's do it that way. So next cycle, this cycle, David can start it, and then we will um, we will share this knowledge like more publicly, so anyone has the has the uh, ability to do it um, going forward. Okay, great. Um, on to the next subject, which is the message from Mark in Telegram, which refers to, please someone with time try to connect for the effect force with BitTensor. They basically have an almost working phase tree, but refined and better scoped. It's currently a distributed network of AI models, but they need some way of refining the models. They go on to say that they are invested in BitTensor and they're biased, but they think that the force is needed there. It could be huge for EFX. And they also add that BitTensor is built on substrate. And as we're somewhat a blockchain agnostic, we could benefit from joining forces with this multi-chain project. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's I've interesting. Of, but... 
BitTensor is on my Bit radar Tensor as well before. I'm on their Discord, but I haven't been following it because, uh, but I imagine they've been making steady releases. Uh, have to look into. I have to ask Mark um, if he had specific uh, things he wanted to reference in the Discord so that I can look into. Yeah, I've heard about the BitTensor too. Like I, I've heard quite a bit about about it. I've, I have tried to read their white paper and get more into it. They're getting a lot of uh, attention now. So I and I and I think it's really relevant to what we're doing as well. So it's a good good idea. I think it's worthwhile. Like it's been on my list for quite a uh, quite, quite some time to to figure out how we can work together, perhaps and. But it's it's still they have a really technical product, so I haven't I'm not fully aware yet of how how it works. But I, I like the suggestion, so I'm I'm definitely open for spending some time and and looking at their architecture and where we can fit in as a data annotation provider. And with the Python SDK, it will be quite um, convenient because that's it's like nearly finished now. We're experimenting with with integrating some external libraries, but for example, using the BitTensor Python library in combination with our SDK, I think we can either you know use BitTensor to create source data sets and then refine them, or to input data sets created by Effect Force into their network. I think it. it it will be make experimentation more easy. So that was on my list to to check out. So then the Python SDK is making good product progress. Yeah, the Python SDK is making good progress. Like we're, yeah, it, it should be really close to um, to release. We're basically writing examples right now and getting them uh, to interact with other Python libraries, like uh, for example, uh, NumPy and and Pandas. So I think the the examples are are basically what we're what's mainly on the to do list now to write some extensive examples and get. Um, yeah, get some feedback from people. Bri earlier requested a uh... If there's any update on Hackathon Ready, and since so, from what I understand, it's been postponed until the Python SDK and its documentation is in good good shape. Did Jesse get dropped again? Can you guys hear me or am I still? Yeah. Yeah. I, I got right, dropped right, cool. this time. 
Maybe it's Discord being wonky today. Yeah, it's a bit strange, but I can hear you guys fine now. So, can you repeat that for the recording? Yeah. So indeed, yes. Um, we're still waiting for um the Python SDK to be finished and the front end. Um, so that we can deploy them on mainnet, and then we can start planning the hackathon. We were thinking that would happen by the end of the year, but I don't think um, that fits anymore to actually do the hackathon by um, this year. So um, it'll probably happen at the beginning of next year. Yeah, Alan asked if he's concerned about a uh, lack of attention the EFX token gets, and um, seems like we gotta just have a good product at this point. And we already kind of have it, but uh, I think the Python SDK is the only thing that can really integrate is with the machine learning uh, AI enthusiast community. Can you can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Right, cool. Yeah. Uh, just to, I heard uh, just on Alan's point. Um, yeah, it is. It is a bit concerning. There is very little attention. Like it's the token has been very, and the project is we're we're definitely not on anyone's radar and and not being looked at, which is, yeah, it's concerning. But right now, like I, what DJ said is true. Like I think we really have to get a product out. Um, that's the only way to get to get out of to get out of this, right? If a bull market would come, maybe somewhere early next year, I think the only way to to make sure that we can get traction and 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 we can get noticed uh, is if we have a working product and we have some AI projects that are that are just using effect network for their data sourcing and, and for having a human in the loop and having a good community of workers. If these things are in place, then like we will definitely get, get noticed and get traction. But before that time, it's just, especially without KuCoin and like, just honestly, like being a long time already in the market, it's just people are, are not very interested. We need to come out with, with, with like a good release traction and partnerships and at the right time to get back in this in the spotlight and also to get a real utility for the efx token i think are all required to to fix it i don't think we can even if we do like really proper marketing right now which i know we're not it's it's way too silent but if we would do proper marketing that this wouldn't like change much as there's just not enough um yeah, there's not enough people looking right now, and and we need more to to sort of get that traction. So the product that we're building now and doing a hackathon and really onboarding both workers and projects that is is the way how we can get that back on track. All the elements are are here, right? We have so much going on in Effect Network, but we just need to show that people need this product, which which they do. So then this next version coming out has all the things we've learned over the past six, seven years. And it's 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 it has all these things fixed and we'll be we'll be able to show that there is really um a need and, and a market for for data annotations or timing is pretty good. So that's that's how I see the the way to get noticed. Indeed. And you can also see that there are competing products that are coming up in the market on other blockchains as well. Um, so 
you can see that other teams are also developing something similar in the space. And but that's a great sign, I think. And like we a lot of people. It, what we have. Yeah, it's a great sign, though, because people coming in now, they will have a really hard time getting up to speed and getting going. So they will get hype and traction, right? Because every new project gets hype and traction really quick, but they do not get clients and they do not get long term. Like these things are really short term. So if you even look at all the projects that we've left behind that did something similar or that started while we were like one or two years ago, uh, a lot of them have, have most all of them I think have basically stopped or or are not doing this anymore or they they didn't manage to to create a working product. So the fact that people are trying, I think, is a really good sign. It means that there is a market and and there and demand for for this product because they they see that there's um, that's the reason why they create their projects, right? So I I think it's a good sign. I do really think that we are on time with meeting these requirements because we're we're nearly there. If we do an, if we do like a big launch just after um, the end of the year, so basically in the new year, then I think we are well on time for yeah for all for everything that that like for for getting the traction that we need. I think we will be on time. Um, and have enough time left to build out the product and grow again. So I, I do think that, yes, to answer Bree's question. Indeed, and to catch a little bit of the optimism that is also bubbling. And Ellen also asks if we're maybe getting overtaken or left behind. I really don't think so. I don't think there's any project right now that has the velocity that, that we have in developing currently this, this version of the product. I mean, we've, we've had so many years um, discussing developing, starting over and starting over again with this product that I don't think that's, yeah, I'm, I'm not worried at all that, that anyone new will be able to put something together like that. Seeing Amazon Mechanical Turk slowly tearing down and this whole thing almost is, is also a sign that I think for like these big companies that might be a threat, like none of them has actually tried to set up something open and decentralized because it's not in their best interest. So I don't think that, that any like, um, established company would make the swing to making an open and decentralized network um, for their business model. So I, I think we're, yeah, I'm not concerned with, with those uh, scenarios. I've also tried um, a competitor and um, they didn't, they seem to have like a very slick website, but it doesn't seem like they have a working product either. And it, it, it feels complicated to use as well because they're putting up these trivial boundaries of having needing an nft in order to actually get started but you can't actually even get the nft to get started so indeed it seems more like smoke and mirrors instead of having an actual product that's already developed um in that leon group chat it seems to have died down i sent a um... A message to Chris, and is he seems to be very busy now with uh, his PhD work um, or job, I guess, post PhD. Um, have you been? Because I also noticed that we haven't been doing many tasks lately. Is there any interest in kind of asking Le uh, other Leon volunteers for other types of tasks? Yeah, definitely interest. Um, yeah, Chris has been like the Leon contact we have has been, he's working of course on his own research and sometimes he pops back in and has some questions and requests and, and then he's, he's away for a while. Um, 
we we still intend to like at least for this clip model evaluation we intend to create a, a like a more complete data set um though we do need to get in touch with more people at leon um but for in our current v2 testnet version of the effect network we are already experimenting with with uh, some templates that make it that heavily improve on the previous um templates we used But working with Leon would be amazing, and it's indeed it should be a priority to to establish a good connection with more people there in the team. So um, we should indeed reach out, uh, DJ. That's that's a great point. Like we should reach out with more team members there uh, that are actively working on these data sets. When we launch V two, I think we want to start with at least having having a yeah a campaign up for an important data set of 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 theirs like maybe the clip model or or maybe a um a related model that we can uh that we can annotate data for using we have the ai fund and um yeah it would be great to have a com campaign for leon in the v2 launch um phase Were there any other questions or agenda items that anybody wanted to add? Um, besides that, then, there's still the proposal that's processing. The, sec the second and final payment for rewards of the current EFX pancakes liquidity pool farm. Um, that one passed and is being processed. Um, there are no upcoming proposals either for the next cycle. There aren't any active proposals. So please, if anybody ha does have a proposal in mind, um, we're open to uh, hearing from you. And uh, just to hit on the, the next on the on the proposal that's in in processing. Um, so I'll I'll be bridging those funds over as soon as the proposal is executed. I already did for the last for the last um, proposal as well. So then I'll make sure that this farm is fully funded um that's currently live and quick update on the farm it's looking quite good there's there's uh, around twenty thousand dollars um value lock there uh apr is pretty high it's almost 50 percent um so that 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 is going going well we will probably do some more promotion and um seeing if we can get uh get some more um lp in there but so far, it's looking pretty good. Oh, that's good to hear. Alan is asking, uh, the EFX we put into these pools, is it worthwhile considering very small volumes? So I think it's especially worth it normally people put their money or their like their uh lp so their their liquidity into these pools because they will get rewards if a lot of people trade so the higher the volume the more you get paid as a lp provider but because we have a low volume pool it's really unattractive for lps to put in their their uh tokens so then these farms are really effective because that's basically the only thing they they have as as a reward for their for the risk they take of providing the liquidity so i think that's that now it's worth it um and 
yeah the volume is very low but it, it's it's also we we have such a after the kucoin delisting it's been yeah we have a really rough position when it comes to liquidity so if, if any trader wants to get into efx like um we're gonna try really hard like soon as we have done all this sort of hard work on the technology side of the v2 we're gonna try really hard to get it back into the spotlight and people will notice this and these people will want to trade and buy tokens and the only place they have is is right now pancake swap because Tifa box has very little users when it comes to um to traders like no one really uses Tifa box and then pancake swap also has not the most users but it's it's quite big when it comes to to dexas so having a good pancake swap pool is right now the only way for traders to come into into our ecosystem which i think we we only have, we have to try to make it even better so by the time we're in the spotlight they will have a good opportunity to to buy tokens and get involved um, in a convenient way Bree mentioned that it's better to encourage liquidity than not to not. And Alan also asked, can we not create an OTC market or peer-to-peer? -peer? Not sure how that would look like, but. Yeah, I like that idea. Like there's, there's, a, there's very few OTC markets for crypto. Like there's BISC, I think, and there's a few others. I love the ideas of these but somehow they're not really taking off i think developing it ourselves would be like too ambitious and and too out of our out of our um expertise you know it would it would be an, a product by itself while creating a farm is already a little bit outside of what we should be doing but it it's simple enough that it it, it serves a purpose but um so I don't think it's it's up to us to create a peer-to-peer -peer market. But if there's any like other ways that we can have decentralized liquidity without having to get into a really crazy exchange business right now, then I think that that's worthwhile to explore. Indeed, create, creating, making trading easier for other people does seem like it's outside the scope of the business of Effect Network. Bri is asking, what about improving our situation on Orion? Uh, I don't think it's necessary. We actually removed liquidity from Orion to, to DeFi bucks. Um, and we were planning to move a bit more liquidity. I think DeFi bucks is, is the one that should maybe get more attention right now as a platform for liquidity, especially as we're going to integrate it with the app and the website. So workers can easily like use DeFi bucks. So I think that's the one we want to concentrate our, our liquidity on. Um, actually, I, I don't know if anyone ever used or, or like if, if, if people were using or we, we kind of asked around and, and tried to look into it and I didn't think anyone was using Orion. So we slowly migrated over Orion liquidity to DeFi box and no one ever like noticed, I think, or like mentioned it. Um, and if you look at the volumes in Orion, it was really low. So I think the users there were, weren't were worth the, the, the effort of, of maintaining it. Do you have, did you like to use that breed? Or did you, were you a user of Orion?
Bree says, not really. They used Qcoin. I've also never really used Orion. I've never met somebody that uses Orion. It does seem to be an interesting product. It seems like it works well, and it's, but it doesn't seem like they ever became very interesting. Um, and the other ones, like New Dex, also seem kind of New Dex works like just, they've uh, never really properly managed to get a lot of popularity. Like you could, sorry, Alex. It, it can be useful if you say instead of wanting to swap, you wanted to buy a specific amount of EOS. The problem is EOS is volatile, so it kind of you can screw yourself trying to do that. Because the, there, there's dudes who have arbitrage set up between New Dex and Defy Box. So if you put an order to buy something at a specific price, if during the swapping it gets to that price, it will actually trigger your, your sell or buy. Um, but uh, that's like a very obscure use that I, I don't think anyone really uses these days. Most people just forgot about it. Um, I posted a link into the lay on Discord. Like, I think you guys like should try it. Like, I don't know if I can try it. It's like you you don't want to go in like and say like we're with crypto, right? Because it always is awkward. But uh, yeah, like the the guy there always posts like these things called open tasks and like requests to do stuff. So like, if you if you want to do something and like kind of uh start getting some name recognition like i would go there thanks for sharing yeah i'll i'll jump in there yeah that's that's great it's a good that sounds looks like a good channel to interact so uh yeah i'll definitely take a look and jump in and see see what's going on that looks great so is this where they're posting the certain thing? They're requesting something to be done. Am I understanding that correct? Yeah, yeah. Christoph frequently posts under the the want to help and data set builder like tags tags like requesting help stuff because because you know Leon is volunteer workforce right so he kind of frequently post like on discord like requests to do stuff and i don't know if they get completed or not but uh i think like this is like a really good place to find out like people who need help with building data sets it's just like i think it will be better for you guys to do it except in instead of me because that like for me it's like i'm doing it on behalf of you but it's like if you do it directly i think it'll be much better Yeah, it's a great suggestion. I'm I'm uh, reading it now, but I think that I'll, I'll I'll jump in there and of course not advertise too hard or talk too much about crypto, but just to see um what's the need and yeah, like I said like the the, lead, the lay on task would be a really nice to have on our lunch um for V2. So we already have a connection, but they clearly need lots of data and they're really reputable when it comes to creating data sets and training algorithms so it would be a great great partner to have um, and to contribute to their cause as well definitely yeah i'll also be in there and if you see a task that um you feel like fits with what effect network can do uh, please point it out Um, I think that might be it. Um, does anybody else want to add anything?
Well, I'll take that as um, a no. I would like to thank everybody for listening in. Um, thank you, Alex. Thank you, Jesse, for being part of the DAO call today. Um, I think uh, you'll post the recording in a little bit, Alex. Yeah, the recording will be posted uh, later today. OK, great. Thank you. But yeah, the, um, yeah, yeah, I'm like, I'm telling you guys, get, get, get involved in the lay on Discord, OK? Like, because uh, uh, with the hackathon, I think it could really like, uh, like, we're going to need a topic, right? And if it can be involve helping Leon build, you know, more data sets, I think that will be really good synergy. Definitely, yeah. Topic. Me too. Thanks, David, for hosting. It was, uh, yeah, good session. Thanks, everyone, for questions and participating. Um, and, yeah, till the next one. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone. Yeah, good evening, everyone, or have a good day.